Assalamualaikum viewers. This is Jan Sarwar and you are watching Sarwar's Chronicle. This is the sequel to my last career talk where I have discussed in length as to how one should approach while choosing armed forces as a career option. Now that you have decided to give it a try, you need to have some knowledge on medical issues. And I'm not saying it without any purpose. Some knowledge on medical issues can really help you in navigating the entire journey smoothly. Because reading and listening something somewhere and how things practically unfold on the ground could be very different, especially when it comes to medical issues. Let me tell you my experience, then you will understand it better. I come from a 3G family. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not meaning 3G mobile technology, right? I belong to a three generations of 4G family. After my agrarian grandparents, my father, he stepped out of village to secure a future in erstwhile Pakistan Air Force. Not a big job though, but as I look back the timeline particularly, it was back in 1950s. Back then for a Bengali young man, somewhere from the village of East, erstwhile East Pakistan, it wasn't easy to secure a job in the Pakistan Defense Forces, considering the martial race based recruitment policy and also inequitable opportunities offered to the Bengalis, it wasn't at all an easy task. As it is known, the fish eaters Bengalis were preferred over other yachts available in surrounding regions in the technical branch due to their better IQ level. So I owe a great deal to that legacy. So I followed the tradition and served in the Bangladesh Army for nearly four decades and later on my daughter he followed his grandfather to join in the bangladesh air force would you believe i was once disqualified in the preliminary medical test i had to wait for a long six months for just not knowing what it was and i had to start it all over again to catch up with the next course my daughter having received a green card from the bangladesh army disqualified for knockney and later on joined in the bangladesh air force as our knockney issue was defeated so you can imagine some bit of knowledge on the issue could save me from that disaster. For enrollment in the armed forces, there are certain medical parameters which aren't very mm, special, neither are they too critical to understand. Otherwise, I would not have come and discuss all these things here. There are many medical issues with which people live their whole life. And those who are naturally drawn into the army or in the armed forces, they don't really appreciate the importance of fitness unless they succumb to difficulties or get medically boarded out. We hear about all those fiascos from those who fail to qualify in the armed forces medical test, be it in the army, navy or air force, or air force. All three services follow more or less the same medical standards. You can find these medical parameters including other details furnished in the respective services website. You need to check those out before applying. So fill up the forms very diligently with authentic information. If your facts and figures are okay, you will be called for preliminary medical test or and Viva Bosi exam in your preferred center on a given date. So first thing first, preliminary medical test. Thousands of yachts from across the country, they register enroll, enrollment. It's therefore necessary that some sort of screening is done before they sit for the written exam. Otherwise, it will be practically impossible to conduct written exams for so many candidates if you think of the administrative arrangement. Roughly 10 to 15 percent applicants are disqualified on medical ground at this stage and there is no point taking the uh, medically unfit candidates to the next level. So medical fitness is the mainstay of military career, not only during the entry but always, whether you are flying a MiG-29 or steering a frigate or a destroyer or chasing an enemy on the run. Of all these three crucial roles, which one you think is the most challenging one? Let me tell you, it's always difficult to physically challenge, challenge the enemy. You know why? You can always bail out of a crashing aircraft by using parachute or land on a floating boat from a sinking vessel. But to physically challenge the enemy, you need sheer courage. Man in the blues and whites may not like it, but that's how it is. So back to the medical issue. 
since many of the candidates coming from the village or the small towns they naturally lag behind in terms of awareness and facilities parenting in the village is also far short of the urban standards also tech health issues so casually that unless things are serious enough we don't even go to the doctors lack of timely remedial measures can turn small things into a long term problem uh, let's discuss some of the medical issues uh, which can bar you from joining in the armed forces or qualifying in the medical test first is about height and weight please remember there is no concession on height your height and weight are measured as per the standard height weight chart known as body mass index chart briefly bmi chart height is often used as an important criteria for selection because it is believed that taller individuals have certain physical advantage over the enemy in the battlefield but it doesn't necessarily mean that the shorter guys cannot fight they certainly can and even when i joined in the unit uh, back in the 1987 i had seen soldiers with shorter height in my unit you know why due to the increasing demand of fighting soldiers during our independence war these guys were enrolled compromising their height and other uh, prerequisites so that was that was an exceptional case but now the process is standardized and therefore if you are short of height no point going to the selection center or to talk of the officers even for enrollment in the soldiers category no concession is made in regards to the height so if you are a marginal case please do the roping cycling swimming by doing that you can easily enhance your height by 1 and 1/2 to 2 inches at this growing age i'm an example while in the college i was a tiny lad and i wasn't very sure of my height so i did a lot of roping and swimming you won't believe i had blisters in my palm and it worked well for me and so it will for you what is equally important always candidate beyond a limit will get disqualified there are plenty of candidates to choose from therefore to qualify you must maintain the exact weight based on your height next is knock knee uh, is a condition where the knees touching each other with the ankle apart beyond a permissible limit and this can seriously hamper your physical activities many think that is an irreversible but good thing is one can get rid of it and i saw how people got out of it let me share it for you i had an elder brother in my area and we studied in the same school he was 2 to 3 years three class senior to me in the school and was adamant to join in the army but he had serious knock knee and we were then 80s kid so back then there was no internet no google right so tv newspapers couldn't solve your problems neither we had i had an any easy access to doctor or life is all experts but life did not stop for him you won't believe the senior tied pillow and wooden plank between the knees and slept for years to straighten up his knee alignment has so to him he became an officer and had a wonderful ca- military career so these days you will find many websites on knock knee problems suggesting quick solutions if serious enough i would recommend you to consult those websites for assistance Next is flat feet. Did you know that having a flat feet like duck can also bar you from joining the army? Absolutely. 20 to 25 percent population generally have flat feet just because the curvature between the toes and heels never developed. This can cause pain in the leg, including sole and ankles, and therefore are uh, unsuitable for military service. You can fix your flat feet with exercise at home. Again. I suggest you to go online for suggestion. Eyesight must have six by six eyesight and without any color blindness. After all, to kill the enemy, you need to see them properly, right? Without making any mistake. Now is the varicose veins. Veins usually flow beneath the skin surface and only within the selected uh, areas like ankle zones or wrist zones. But the varicose veins are those blood vessels twisted in their spread. blackish or bluish in color and bulge out of skin surface they can lead to blood clotting and other complications and are not conducive to rigorous physical training therefore the candidates with varicose veins aren't selected for enro- selected for enrollment in the armed forces you can do nothing about the piles and harmonia if you have those i'm sorry to tell you that your future in the armed forces is bleak and don't be 
disheartened. The world is big enough to accommodate human beings with difficulties and shortcomings. Only thing you need to stay positive. Self-injury is another issue which is taken very seriously in the armed forces. Guys in their yachts can be emotional and sentimental at times, compelling them to resort to self-injury. Some even burn their hands with cigarettes or write the names of their girlfriends using sharp blades following breakups. Such acts may help to cope with intense feeling for the time being but can lead to accidental deaths. Therefore, such individuals are entrusted for enrollment in the armed forces. After all, soldier safety and security cannot be put in the hands of the emotional commanders. So these are some of the issues, medical issues that I wanted to share with you. This should be good enough until you have the final medical, which should be the last event. After the preliminary medical tests, you will be in the queue for the Viva BOSI exam. I'll have a separate session on the Viva BOSI exam which is certainly a very important one. Do watch out for the next video. Until then, stay well. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.